Hello and welcome to the truths. Well, it's not really truths, but it's the truesest thing. Because look, a revolutionary act has happened. Protesters have created an autonomous zone in Seattle. Now, for a long time, I've been banging on about the only way I can envisage revolution is decentralization and fully autonomous syndicates acting in confederacy with one another. Let's see what's going on here in Seattle, because I'm intrigued to know if this can actually work. Is this potentially real revolution? Tonight with a live look from Capitol Hill where protesters have created a so-called autonomous zone just days after Seattle police boarded up and abandoned the East Precinct. I suppose there's a bit of an assumption that it's temporary, but you could argue that, you know, where's Mesopotamia now? All countries are temporary. Where's Byzantium? Is that what it was called? Uh, you know, countries are temporary. Countries are constructs. An ancient country like England, construct. A relatively new country like United States of America, construct, flag, economic system, confederacy between states, agreements, laws, uh, and a constitution, like a magical spell written in language. So the creation of a nation is a possibility. And real revolution, which seems to be what we're discussing now, is a possibility. Let's see what uh, Tucker Carlson says about it. And I, is it me or is Tucker Carlson looking a bit Something's happened to him in lockdown. I don't know what it is. Is it his hair? Has he gone a bit slinky? Has he gone a bit slender? He's having a lockdown moment. How many countries are there on Earth? Last week, there were a total of 195. But if you guessed that, you're wrong, because tonight, there are 196. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the latest addition to the global family of nations, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, formerly known as downtown Seattle. I like his sort of patronising tone, don't you? It's really interesting. There's a new country. Well, diddly diddly dee. It's sort of like he's sort of taking a piss, isn't he? His whole tone is take, taking a piss. I like these um, right-wing commentators that emerge out of America. But what do they tell us? Like, you know, like, and, and the way that they vary, what does it mean? Like Bill O'Reilly to like, you know, Rush Limbaugh, this guy now, who there was all those others, Glenn Beck, was he one? You know, like, I, I don't know why, I find them interesting. Who's Denny Hall? Who's Denny Hall? Who's Denny Hall? Looks pretty appealing. <laughs> Looks pretty appealing. I wonder if there's a future in these ideas. I wonder when discussions begin about defunding police and having community services that are more appropriate for the requirements of a particular community rather than a kind of uniform municipality that's spread across everywhere that seems increasingly and obviously in light of the recent Black Lives Matter movement and the events that um, inspired these, these sort of international protests. I wonder if it's necessary to not only defund, but entirely disband numerous institutions. And when looking at these institutions, we have to consider which institutions are symptoms of the way that power is structured and which ones are formative. I would argue that economic and financial institutions are formative and uh, municipal institutions such as police force are symptomatic. Where is power actually held? Power is asserted, exerted, control is experienced through police, and this defunding is very, very, very interesting. Um, but this whole Seattle deal containing a zone, I wonder how you run it. I wonder how you medicalize it. I wonder, see, like, if you do decentralize power, in the end, what happens in the areas of justice, security, medicine? Those are considerations. I'm not suggesting it's not possible. I believe it is. But I'm really interested to see how these things play out. But before you jump on Expedia to book a trip with the family to the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, now known, by the way, as CHAZ, the country's tourism and economic development department is calling it that. Not long ago, that these kind of, that kind of sneering contempt would have been applied to countries in sort of Eastern Europe or uh, African nations so like you know so like you know terms like banana republic and all of these kind of ideas are to, to sort of say there are certain nations and institutions that are inherently more valuable than others but of course as i've already said a nation is a construct if it's a construct why well, that means i think that you can construct 
others. It's a bit like the arguments around religion. What are you saying? That a religion that's new is not as valuable as an old one. A nation that's new is not as valuable as an old one. This for me seems like in a sense an extension of a protest, but where does revolution come from? How do new ideas, new communities begin? It's not nothing aggressive or violent or nothing like that. We'd, we didn't come out here for any of that. All we wanted was what was equal and what was right. So that's what's happening in Seattle tonight. Not a big deal. A brand new nation within our own borders. Yes, the last time that happened, it did kick off a civil war that killed hundreds of thousands of Americans and lasted for years. But it's not a huge deal. Well, this is the getting to the heart of the matter. The who has the right to establish communities? Who has the right to say we, are, we want to be exempted from the conditions of this nation? I've been thinking about it a long while, like that it wouldn't necessarily have, that's a particular reflection of a, a particular moment, what's happening in Seattle. But I wonder how that would feel if your community, my community, was autonomously run by the people that lived there democratically. It could be a reflection of the values of the people that lived there. That would mean there would be variety. That would mean necessary autonomy. I believe that would end a great deal of conflict because, let's face it, there are many, many cultures, many traditions, many ways of identifying. And whilst I do believe in the universal, while I do believe in an essential oneness that abides in all of us, that we are all an expression of, it's clear that different identities have been granted different privilege, power, and other identities have been exploited. And so, to create new communities based on the values of different tribal or cultural uh, identity, that's very, very exciting. That doesn't mean to say that there couldn't be sort of rather more cosy jam making communities, not just uh, black flag Antifa type communities or other extreme, and even the word extreme, you know, extreme compared to what? I think it's a very interesting and exciting moment. And I can see why dear Tucker Carlson is agitated by it because this is the heart of conservatism. And what does conservatism mean? Conservatism means keep shit the same. Don't let stuff change radically. Protect the interests of the powerful. Do not allow resources and the ability to choose to drift into new communities. But what will happen to the American citizens who may have been shopping downtown in Seattle and are now stuck behind the border of Chaz? It'd be pretty interesting if you were down there shopping in the middle of that pandemic and the Black Lives Matter campaign in a place that had been boarded up by the police. What are you gonna do? Pop down to Macy's or Superdrug, get yourself some Lem Sips and the Tiara in the middle of that madness. What Car uh, Carlson, uh, Tucker Carlson is doing is proposing the complexity that occurs when a new nation is established or when a new community is established and it is unprecedented but I suppose when you look at American history like he's mentioned like the Civil War that's what happens when it's a sort of widespread when a great many people identify as a different nation but why you know what is that border between America and Canada what's the border between Scotland and England what are all borders what are all nations in a sense this is a significant moment where many many people are waking up to previously unrecognized, certainly by certain members or strata of society, privileges and forms of oppression. This moment of awakening could have, it looks like it's gonna have serious ramifications. Can we repatriate them? Are they now prisoners of war? <laughs> In a way, I don't think that that attitude's gonna work for much longer, like that kind of, like, you know, remember I used to get spoken to by certain teachers at school, like, kind of like, oh, really? So what are you going to do? Sort of contempt, a sneering, contemptuous attitude. Change is occurring. When you like look at the um, sort of casual, rather louche articulation of the contributor Rooks, or Rooks, the, e, the uh, fella they spoke to on the news, like, there's a, he's a world away from Tucker Carlson. How can all of these views be accommodated in a single society? They can't be. They were, you know, why Tucker Carlson should be able to set up his own Fox World autonomous community for all the Fox folk, I think. That's what freedom means, that you can have over here 
a religious community over here, communities based on sex, gender identification over here. You can do what you want. That's what I believe. And I think that if you wanted to have Tucker Carlson Fox World, you could have it. But the problem is, is that we're all living in Tucker Carlson Fox World to a degree. Look at this wonderful tweet. Donald Trump described the protesters as domestic terrorists, which is almost an anagram of his own name and certainly has the same initials as his own name, who have taken over Seattle run by radical left Democrats. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be interested to see how Democrats respond to this because this reawakening of radical politics will leave centrist parties, which I would describe the Democrats and most movements, previously left-wing movements as, they're going to find that the territory, territory is shifting, is shifting. That it's no longer about the politics of gestures, but about genuine reorganization. Jason, thanks so much for coming on. What's it like in Chaz? Well, right now it's too violent for us to go in. It's a little bit too scary for us to go in because when you go in and you have a different opinion than what they would like to be seen on video, they end up harassing you and they assault you. You should have a look at this video by Baritone Day Thurston, uh, who in his TED talk breaks down the, sort, the construction of racist headlines and attitudes and shows how innocuously they've been presented for a long time. Have a look at that. I had a friend who's a reporter who got assaulted just two nights ago. When you wait, go wait, into this I'm, area, so, I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to stop you there. I've got to check your privilege for a second. Aren't developing nations al always seized by turmoil? It's weird, isn't it, how like, Fox News has become like, pure just entertainment and piss-taking and a shtick, and I've got to stop you there. In a way, they're just sort of parodying and ridiculing the sort of evolving awareness around language and privilege, but also the reporters trying to legitimately claim that report, that reporters are a, an oppressed minority that are subject to violence. Look around, it's just it's peaceful, everyone's chill. Police say they're getting reports of armed people manning the checkpoints. And while Washington is an open carry state, that's interesting, isn't it? Because now Second Amendment law, the right to bear arms, and as this uh, police officer or police chief is saying, that the, it's an open carry state. So, like the actual idea behind the Second Amendment, hold on a minute, what if we found ourselves in a situation where the government was completely unrepresentative of the people? Then the population should be able to arm themselves in order that they can form militia and confront the state. Now, we know that's ridiculous because of the amount of state power. But if en masse people, armed people, resist, wow, that's an interesting situation. Me, because I, I um, believe in non-violence, you know, that's sort of my personal position. But I can see how now the American Constitution is going to become mobilized against itself. There is no legal right for those arms to be used to intimidate community members. Again, like what's happening is this bizarre reversal, whether it's the reporters feeling harassed or the police chiefs feeling intimidated. This is an inversion of the previous situation. Seattle is interesting because we're only members of our nation if we say we are. If we don't feel that we are benefiting from the conditions of our nation, that old refrain of why don't you go back to where you come from, well, that now is being reversed. It's why don't you claim these spaces for yourself? Why don't you set up your own communities? Why don't you exempt yourself from taxation and law? Why don't you establish conditions that are amenable to you? And in fact, why don't you? Why don't all of us? Why don't we create communities that are reflective of our values? Why don't we respect that some people might want to run communities one way, others in an entirely different way, and as long as they're not impeding on one another's freedom, what problem is there with that? Police say they want to negotiate with protest leaders to return officers to the precinct, but both police and protesters admit there are no leaders. Everyone's stepping up and being a leader and everyone taking initiative and not being complacent and watching out for each other. Leaderless autonomous collectives. Could this be happening in schools, hospitals, workplaces, communities, new laws? Of course, there'll be challenges when it comes to huge issues such as medicine, justice, etc. But 
These things could be derived from the community and established by the people that are affected by them. What's clearly happened is that for too long people have felt oppressed and persecuted under institutions that they fund through taxation, that they uh, that they live under, but don't feel protected by, protected or served by, to qu uh, quote back the uh, US police um, maxim at itself. What a curious and exciting time this is. I wonder where this is all gonna lead.